Today, we're gonna to talk about something that I hate. Feedback. I think we all kind of hate feedback. It's kind of like the bane of our existence as church sound guys. Feedback is distracting, sounds awful, everyone notices it. It's just kind of the worst. So let's talk about some easy ways to get rid of it forever. Welcome to the channel. I'm Johnny from Worship Sound Guy. If you're new around here, you might wanna consider subscribing. We've got a motto around here that every church deserves great sound, yours included. So we're on a mission to help you achieve that. And we post videos like this all the time to help you do exactly that. If you've been around for a little while, welcome back. We're so glad you're here. You might wanna hit that little notification bell so that you get notified whenever we drop a new video. If this video has helped you out, maybe consider adding a like down at the bottom. That'll help other church sound techs just like you find this content. All right, so let's talk about how to banish feedback forever. Before we can really understand how to banish feedback forever, we have to understand what it is. So to define feedback, it's pretty simple. It's basically a loop that happens between your input and output within your system. It's a cycle of sound that feeds back into itself. So think about this. You've got a microphone on the stage, but you've also got a really loud PA system, and maybe the speakers are kind of close to your microphone. So what happens? Say a singer's voice goes through and it starts this cycle where the sound goes into the microphone, goes through your mixing console, comes back out the speakers, but then a little too much of it gets back into the microphone. And so a cycle starts. It just keeps going into the microphone, out of the PA, into the microphone, out of the PA. You get where this is going. It starts to feed back. So that's the cycle that we're looking to stop. So let's look at some creative ways to break that cycle and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Before we get a little more technical, let's talk about two factors that cause feedback that are pretty easy to fix. The first one is mic placement. So this usually applies to vocal mics, but it can really happen with any live mic on stage. So the main thing I've seen this with is where vocal microphones are placed too far out in front of the PA system. So this can happen if they're uh, too close out in front of mains or subs or even front fills. Um, or say, for example, your pastor has the habit of walking around in front of the PA system. Maybe he comes out into the room a little bit. Uh, this can be just a perfect storm for feedback. It's a lot easier to start that cycle of feedback when the microphone comes right out in front of the PA speaker. So if you can keep all your microphones behind the PA, that'll help a lot towards eliminating feedback. I've seen this a lot in PA installations where the PA is hung high in the air. Maybe you've got like kind of a center cluster of speakers or like a couple outfills, but they're hung really high in the room. And so it's kind of hard to know exactly on the stage when you start to get out in front of the PA especially for a pastor, like maybe he's out on his own little like jut out platform. And so he's able to walk out in front of the PA while still being technically on stage. That's a big problem. And it's worth knowing where kind of that invisible line is on your stage where microphones start to encounter feedback issues. Easy fix number two is simply adjusting how your singers hold their microphones. Way too often I see singers cupping the capsule of the microphone. So maybe it feels comfortable for them, but it sounds terrible and it can create a resonance around the capsule of the mic uh, that can create feedback very easily. Microphones are very intentionally designed so that sound passes through the grill, hits the diaphragm, and then diffuses out without creating any resonance resonances that could build up into feedback. But when we introduce something like say a cupped hand, that can create an artificial resonance that the manufacturer certainly didn't design for. So just tell your singers, hey, move your hand down the microphone body a little bit. Just hold it right in the middle. Don't cover the antenna at the end either. Just hold it right in the middle and you'll be good to go. I've seen so many singers who are like, oh, I, I just have feedback issues all the time. And then I look at where they're holding the mic and they're just cupped right around the capsule. 
it's an easy fix that can go a long way towards eliminating feedback. The next step on our journey towards eliminating feedback is the room itself. I get that oftentimes we're working with what we have and our room may not be perfect and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. Maybe it's a converted gym or some kind of warehouse environment. Or maybe it's just a sanctuary where there wasn't a lot of thought given to acoustic design while it was being built. Whatever the case is, we can still work with a less than ideal room design if we know a few basic acoustic principles. Now, the science of acoustics is really complicated, and I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of detail here. Um, if you want, I've got a few textbooks that I can share with you on that that I picked up in college. But what you do need to know is that every room is going to have a certain amount of resonances to it. These are usually produced by something called a standing wave, which is essentially where the waveform, the way it goes up and down, is just right to fit within the dimensions between, say, two walls of a room. When this happens, the wave can sort of just sit there and resonate back and forth between like two walls or a floor and a ceiling. When these standing waves start to build up, they can form what's called a room mode. Basically, that's just a fancy way of saying that at a certain loudness, at a certain frequency, you'll start to get a buildup of frequencies that wasn't present in the original sound that came out of your loudspeakers. You've probably heard this before in certain rooms where you can just hear a ringing in the room as you talk or as you play music. Uh, it's very common. Every room has modes. It's just a matter of figuring out which ones are actually impacting your sound as you mix and which ones you need to worry about. So there are plenty of great ways to track down where feedback is happening and identify frequencies that are problematic. You could use a dedicated analyzer suite like Smart. You could use a plugin like Waves X Feedback, which we'll talk about in a bit. But my favorite way is actually by using your ears. And this app. This is the Analyzer app for iOS and Android. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But basically you can see as I'm talking, it's showing the frequencies of my voice. And if there's feedback, you can immediately see exactly where that frequency is on the screen. Now, it may not be the most accurate analyzer. Like it's not a full smart suite inside your phone but it's good enough. So whenever I hear feedback in the room and I'm not 100% sure where it's coming from, and maybe it's like, you know, the middle of uh, service or whatever, like during worship, I don't wanna like, you know, sweep an EQ around or anything, certainly. I just wanna be able to see quickly where that frequency might be so I can notch it out. The Analyzer app is the perfect way to do that. Even within a full mix, you'll usually be able to see a little peak where the feedback is happening. Um, and it tells you what frequency that is, and then you just go in and EQ that out. It's a really great cost-effective way to analyze your room signal and figure out where problem points are. So the next question becomes, once you've found a problematic frequency that might be causing feedback, what do we do with it? Do we just go in on all our vocal channels and start hacking out EQ notches and just trying to eliminate it? I would say no. What I like to do once I've found a problem frequency that's causing feedback is to identify why the feedback is happening in the first place. Is it maybe something a little more simple than EQ? Is it that the singer's walking out in front of the PA with their microphone? Or is it that they're cupping the capsule of their mic? Is it that a communicator's headset is positioned improperly on his face? All those things are much easier fixes than going in and trying to dial in very precise EQ. One of the biggest culprits of feedback that I've seen church sound engineers run into is having their gain set too high. That might seem really, really simple, and it is, but if you don't take just a minute to do that little pre-fader listen, check your meter, make sure that your level into the console is hitting at the proper level, you're going to be more likely to run into feedback issues. You can think of gain sort of like how much signal is being let into the system. How much are we capturing from the microphone? And if that's set too high, obviously you're going to be more prone to capturing unwanted cycles of feedback. So make sure your gain is set properly and that there's not some obvious issue like mic placement on stage before proceeding into trying to notch out anything on your EQ. When we reach the point of getting to EQ to help eliminate feedback, there are a couple important things to consider. First is where we're applying the EQ. There are three main places where we might wanna place an EQ to deal with feedback. First is on the master bus, second is on a group, 
and third is on individual channels. Let's take vocals for example. If I'm dealing with feedback on a vocal, but only one mic out of say five or six that are on stage are having feedback issues, I would just put an EQ on that one individual mic. And honestly, if it's just happening on one mic, I might check gain, mic placement, how the singer's holding the mic first to make sure there aren't any other issues there before I move into EQing. But if I'm having feedback issues on all my mics, then I might put an EQ to address the feedback on the vocal group. If I've got a situation where a group of mics on stage seem to be almost working together to lean into a room mode and create feedback, I'm gonna address that at a group. I've got all my vocals bust into a group and I'm just gonna use uh, some sort of a very tight cue or notch filter to zap out that little room mode once I've found it on my analyzer. That's a way to make sure that all the vocals are being treated the same and that the issue is being addressed across all your vocal mics. Similarly, if I was mixing for live stream and I'm hearing some kind of a resonance in my room mics, I would go in, listen to my room mic bus, and then apply the processing across all my room mics to eliminate the presence of that room mode in my room mic signal. Finally, if you're hearing a resonance or frequency buildup across your entire mix, like it doesn't matter if it's just vocals, just drums, guitars, whatever it is, there's something in your room, it's almost no matter what's being fed into it, it's creating a resonance. That's a pretty sure sign that your room has some sort of a room mode that needs to be addressed. And the best way to do that is at the master bus level. If you can apply an EQ across your master bus and do your EQ moves there to eliminate that frequency buildup, it's gonna help you a ton because it means you don't have to go in individually on every single track and make the same EQ move. You kind of get it in a top-down function where you're applying the processing across the board and that way you're saving yourself some work and you're able to make sure that whatever goes through the console, it's being treated properly. Last but not least, let's talk about one of my favorite automated tools to deal with feedback. It's the Waves X Feedback plugin, or I guess it's got no vowels, so X, X Feedback, Feedback, Feedback. We're gonna put some vowels in it, it's X feedback. So the way that this works is simply by feeding a signal into it, usually from maybe a vocal mic or something on stage, that's actually going to pick up feedback. We're gonna let the microphone enter into feedback and then the plugin will actually analyze the feedback frequencies detect it, and then the plugin will automatically apply notch filters at the frequency points that it detects as being issues. So boom, feedback gone. Mostly. You can't always rely on it to be perfect, you may have to do some fine tuning yourself. I've also seen instances where it tries to add so many different filters that it just kind of gets crazy and it really will uh, affect the overall tone of your sound. So don't let it do that. But you know, if you are dealing with some consistent frequency issues or you're having to uh, maybe move environments quickly, maybe you're a portable campus and you gotta quickly dial in a room, X feedback is a great way to make it happen. All right, that's it, we've solved feedback. Okay, maybe not quite, it can still be challenging and sometimes it's still hard to hunt down, but hopefully with the tools you've learned in this video, it'll be a big step forward towards eliminating feedback forever. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Chances are, if uh, you know you got something out of this video, you probably know someone else who would also get something out of it. Uh, if you're into these kind of videos, make sure you hit the little bell down below so that you'll get notified whenever we have a new one. Thanks, see you next time.